Good morning. Welcome to our second speaker series of the year. We have a special one as always. Before I get started, a quick little house cleaning. I need you for 20 minutes. I need all of you 20 minutes to focus on our guest who came over here on a nice cold morning in his sweet car that he's got parked outside just for you. So I need you to have all of your attention. If you can go ahead and take out your earbuds, and if you can just for this time not to do your homework during this time so you can hear, Ben has a story. Now, Ben Smithson is a Blackman High class of 2006 alumnus. He attended Tennessee Tech College of Engineering, and he graduated in May 2010 with a degree in manufacturing and industrial technology with a minor in business. He currently is growing his own business, Smithson Speed and Engineering. He focuses on building, restoring, and maintaining classic cars using skills such as project planning, vehicle design, and engineering. He even does metal fabrication, circuits and wiring, body work, a ton of stuff. Now, he previously worked for Toyota, Nissan, Walker Die Casting, and even had a couple of internships with Goodrich. He is developing a promising career in the manufacturing field. Now, I can say all that, but I can also show you what he does. That's parked outside right now, and Mr. Smith is going to show us two quick clips of what he does. That's what he does for a living. We got one more. Wait till you hear the sound on this one. Here we go. That's what he does. How about that? That's what he does for a living. All right. So, please welcome Ben Smithson. It's great to have you, Ben. It's good to be here. Let's see. We're all mic'd up for good? I believe so. All yep. All right. Let's talk. Now, Ben Smithson here, class of 2006 here at Blackman. Let's talk first, though, growing up. What is a memorable childhood story you would like to tell? So I guess there's a lot of them. Um, probably a collection. Uh, I guess where I grew up was it was a neighborhood, an older neighborhood, you know, probably 15, 20 houses, so a little different than your neighborhood you see today, large lots, and there were, you know, a few kids my age I, I kind of run around with, but we were always into something that seemed like terrorizing the neighborhood. We had go-karts and four-wheelers, and as we got older, graduated to dirt bikes and stuff like that, but, you know, just all those times, you know, just playing with them, we were out, you know, daylight to dusk, out, out playing with, you know, there was a big field behind our, actually where I grew up is where um, those fields that are now the Avenue Mall. Uh, oh. My parents' house backed up to that, so it was all kind of cow pasture. So we were always into something, um, just out riding bicycles or, or you know playing with you know cars. And you know, always had my dad being you know in cars. We all had some kind of junk we always messed with when we were little, and like I said, go cars. So that just that kind of thing was real fun. Um, growing up with them. They were a little bit older than me, and so obviously always looked up to them and all their friends that came around. So it was pretty fun uh, just 
being able to get out and be kids and get dirty and, yes. and, and all that. So uh, this is a 1932 Chevy Coupe. Your grandfather acquired this in the early 1990s. So you worked on this with your grandfather? So no, um, he had got, my grandfather owned the body shop in Woodbury, County, Cannon County, that's where a lot of my family's from. Um, and he had acquired that when I was little. Um, and then it's kind of funny how that worked. He ended up passing away when I was 10 and my dad got it and kind of that picture on the right, it had some paint on it, but it was uh, uh, as redneck as it sounds. It was kind of a yard ornament. It set up behind his shop that he had at the house. And uh, as I got older, I think I started working on that car when I was in college, actually, so probably 19 or so. Wow. Um, we just always went to car shows and swap meets. Uh, I started looking at the prices on some of these old bodies that people were selling. And I'm like, well, I got a body. It's free, so I might as well start working on it. And it was kind of cool that I was at Tech. I was learning. I had drafting classes, AutoCAD classes. And uh, I think it was one winter break, I came home and I just went out and took a bunch of measurements with like a tape measure of this body and kind of the engine and stuff, how I wanted it. And I drew, I put it all in CAD and drew my frame. So mm -hmm. I built the chassis for that car and everything, but it all started with me going and taking some measurements and then putting it on paper for sense in yeah. CAD. And I used those dimensions <coughs> from CAD to cut out all of my metal to build that car. Wow, that's impressive. Now, you did say your, your father, he's a hot rider, and he took you to many car shows, cruise nights. Mm -hmm. So you worked on cars together with your dad a lot. Uh, what did you learn from those experiences with your dad? So obviously a lot of technical skills, right? You know, the, the grinding, sanding, spraying primer, paint, uh, welding, uh, stuff like that is, is, you know, you just kind of pick it up as you go. And there's still stuff like today, you know, I, I've got guys working for me and, and we learn from it, right? I learn from them, they learn from me and it's um, pretty cool. But from dad, all that I learned and, that, and that's great, but you know, just the, the time and the patience because I was young and I would get distracted through it easily. Not that that's changed much now, but <laughs> I, I learned a lot of patience from him and just he's such a, he's probably one of the most patient people I know, you know, so I'd be over here messing around and then I'd get sidetracked and be over here and I'd just leave. And, but you know, we'd always kind of get roped back in and focused on what needed to happen and like the sequential steps it needed to happen in, right? Because some of these things you can't just go out and do whatever you want. It's got to be um, in a systematic way. So patience and, and, and just the, uh, it's, a, it's an art, I guess, in a sense, mm. doing some of this and just the, the patience and the skill to put that together to make the finished product turn out like you want it just takes discipline. Nice. You were not just the flashlight guy like I was. You guys know what that <laughs> well, you is? Start You're the flashlight right? guy? Yeah. Okay. Hand me some tools. You, you got to have right? someone. That's right. So. Now, Blackman High School, there's his graduation picture. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Mm, thanks. <laughs> um, what are some of your favorite memories of being here at Blackman High? Man, I, I tell people still regularly, like, high school and college, they were like the best eight years of my life. You know, I really enjoyed the high school, all the, you know, the teachers, you know, the classes, just being here, making all the socialization friends. Um, yeah, coming to all the sports events, you know, I had friends, I'd never played sports, uh, but I had a lot of friends that did, so to support them and obviously come talk to people and socialize and, yeah, and all that. But uh, the, the football games were fun, baseball games. Um, you know, one thing they did, I guess it was correlated here, I don't know if you still do, is I had a car show, like a homecoming car show mm -hmm. and a parade. So we always came and did that. And even just the time spent, not during school hours, where we would come hang out before and after school in the parking lot and just, you know, <laughs> sit out there and shoot the breeze and get to know each other. I mean, it was just, it was a real fun time that really weren't too many responsibilities. <laughs> you know, just kind of come to school, go to class sometimes, you know. I will tell you guys right before this event, I saw Coach Knox come in, and it was a really cool reunion because Coach Knox and Ben graduated, or gra graduated yeah, together. Yeah, we graduated together. And so it was a really cool reunion years later to see those friendships come back. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So you then attended Tennessee Tech, and you graduated mm -hmm. with a degree in manufacturing and industrial tech with a minor in business for our business people here. Um, what is some advice you would give about choosing a college, and what did you learn not to do at college? <laughs> so, you know, it's 
sometimes hard to see where you're going to be. Even now, like I, I got an engineering degree, but I'm doing my own thing, running a business. But you know, if you can at least kind of get self-aware enough where you have an idea of like where you want to be at, uh, you know, thinking about five years or ten years. And I know that's hard to do at this age because it's just hard to see to have that foresight. But get an idea of what you like, what you're interested in, uh, maybe a passion. You probably may already have it. But that would be the biggest thing. Figure that out and, and then do your research. Like Tennessee Tech, I, I knew I kind of wanted to do engineering at the time. So Tennessee Tech was and I believe still is one of the uh, more well-known engineering schools around. So that's one reason I picked that. I mean, I went and I toured MTSU and UT Tech, so but I kind of made my decision there because of the engineering aspect of that. Um, but that and just being able to work for it, make a plan. Um, even so that you, because I guess there's a there's a passion and there's there's a you know this is what you want to be, but sometimes it takes a little bit of footwork and, and effort um, over here before you can get to there in mm -hmm. a sense. So um, you got to do what's realistic for you. I mean, anybody could say I want to go to Brown or some some crazy university that you may not be able to afford. Or you want to do get a job that you you may not be able to support your lifestyle on, but you have to do a little footwork and, and get to where you want to be. Don't give up on that dream. If that's where you want to be, make it happen. But it's, it's pretty realistic now that you can't always just go from A to B. You may have to go A, B, C and finally end up in D and, and just you have to stay disciplined and stay focused on that. But if that's where you want to be, just make it happen. It just, we, we discussed, though, the first semester. Talk about how that first semester was. Yeah, I'd rather not think about how that first <laughs> semester was. So, um, Obviously, I had a great education here at Blackman. Um, I graduated with a pretty high GPA, I think 3.8 something, another all honors and all that stuff. But um, moving off to college, <laughs> and it was quite a treat for me. I, I'd been used to being able to just kind of come to class, do a little studying, make good grades. And I got off to college and, and started out the gates with some engineering type classes, just your gen ed, and then like a calculus. And it was totally different on two aspects. Number one, the, the skill side, just they wouldn't let you use calculators, right? Who does that? Um, mm. That was a challenge. And then me being off alone without anyone telling me what to do uh, was a challenge as well. And I ended up coming out of my first semester in college with a 2.0 GPA, which is unheard of. I'd never had, never thought I would even have. It was a big uh, wake up call. So in a sense, I had to learn how to study. I wasn't used to having that discipline to know how to do that. So I would, oh, we got a big test tomorrow. Well, let's just stay up late and study and see how that goes. And it didn't go well, mm -hmm. um, obviously. So that was a big challenge in college is just, uh, it really was a wake up call. Absolutely. Well, you started working on your 32 coupe in 2008 yeah, and you finished right. in 2014. Yes. So is that a long time or is that normal? Uh, so it's a long time for somebody that does it every day. Like now, if it took us that long to build a car, there'd be something wrong, at least a car like that. Um, but you know, there was time constraints with me being away at college during part of that. And then obviously there was money constraints with me being in college because I didn't have the money to put in the parts that car. I just scrounged parts and, you know, did what I could with it. But yeah, that's a, it, it shouldn't take that long. <laughs> yes. So how did you create your vision of what you wanted this end product to look like? Uh, part of that was just going around the car shows, getting an idea of what I liked, the style. And I actually, I drew a rendering of that car that is actually pretty similar to that now before I started the car. You know, I had my CAD drawing, which kind of gave me an idea what it was going to look like, but I just sketched out a rendering like this is what kind of want it to look like mm. these wheels and this engine and so forth. And that's kind of, like I said, it gave me a direction I could go for and just kind of got to it through the, through the years that it took. Nice. So you've worked for Toyota and Nissan and Walker die casting. So you've worked for some of these corporations. Mm -hmm. What lessons did you learn from working in the industry? And what, what were those interviews like? <laughs> so, they were all a little different. Uh, Walker die casting was my very first job out of school. It was in Lewisburg and it was a family owned, smaller business. It wasn't anything like a, a corporation like Nissan and, and Toyota. 
Um, really, in all of them, you kind of got to learn how to talk to people, how to communicate um, to get your point across and to get things done, I, I guess. There's the technical side where you've got to do the engineering work, you know, and that's just, it is what it is. But sometimes there are some roadblocks based on, you know, how much things cost or how long it's going to take, you know, the return on this investment that you've got to kind of wiggle your way around and convince your boss or his boss or whoever that it's worth this investment to, to, to get the return on it. Um, and then you work with all different types of people in that line of work. I worked with um, folks out on the line quite a bit and, and quality and other departments. I was in body shop. We worked with paint shop, trim shop. And, you know, there's just a lot of moving parts there, a lot of different people um, that all have their own viewpoint on things, just like you have your own viewpoint on things. Um, you've got to learn to compromise and, hmm. and work together for an end goal. Absolutely. So your work ethic, obviously you've got to have it, um, but what drives you? What is it that makes you want to be better than what you did yesterday? So, and I guess I've always been like this, but one thing that really, even from the Japanese manufacturer and the Nissan Toyota, one of their things is a continuous improvement, and they drive that into their culture hmm. in every single way, so Kaizen is what it's called, and it's, it's there's always a better way of doing things. Don't ever be stagnant, you know, just because this is the way they've done it in the past, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the best way to do it. Um, I thought that was really cool. And even uh, I went to a class, it was a metal shaping class after when I got into this, um, a hot rod custom car build, he's a legend. He's 94 years old now, Gene Winfield. Um, I learned a lot from him on the metal shaping technical side, but one of his, his motto, he came in and said it every day, he said he said it for years and years, is that every day is a school day. And I took that, that's, that's pretty cool. In essence, it's kind of the same thing. There's, you can always improve. But he's 94 years old, been doing custom cars. He's built a bunch of old cars you've seen in, in old movies. Um, but every day's a school day. There's something we can learn from you. There's something, I, you know, it, it's just, it's never ending. So that's, uh, that's probably it. And just there's so many, the, I don't know if competition's the right word, but there's so many shops and guys out there that are super talented building cars now. Um, that you know, you kind of got to stay right there uh, with them, and, and there's a lot I could learn from those guys. I, I told, I've gotten to know a lot of these big builders um, through the years, just through cars and going around and, and talking. And I told them, some of them, that'd be so awesome if I could just quit doing work and just come work for you for you know six months or something, and just be able to pick up because everybody does things different, and you know, pick up some of the ways that they do things. There's so many. It's what you don't know, you know, you, you don't know it sometimes. They may have this cool little trick that they do and, and it just would be awesome to be able to learn from other people in the same industry doing the same work because there's a lot of people doing Absolutely. some magnificent work out there. Well, like for that. our business students, and we've got that part where um, you've got to market yourself. I mean, guys, he's wearing a t-shirt with his name on it. I'm sorry, he's wearing a shirt. It says Smith and Speed and Engineering. He owns this thing. That means you started it at some point too. You thought, I'm going to just take the leap and go. So um, how did you even go about starting that business? So it's funny how this worked. I'd been, you know, I grew up doing this as a hobby from when I was little, I always done it. And when I moved to Alabama, uh, when I got a job with Toyota, it was right outside of Huntsville. I bought a house and built a shop down there. And I started doing some side work down there. So just all on the side, I was still doing engineering full time. Um, and that kind of got, I guess there's two things. I, I met a lot of these builders around that time when I finished that car. It was in like these winter circles, so I met a lot of these guys. And it's just like a really cool, close-knit family. You know, everybody's just down to earth, chill. There's nobody. It's not like a big, it's not stuffy, not real, com you know, like a big competition everybody. I thought that was real cool because people were willing to help you out, talk to you, and so forth. So I liked the people aspect of it. And then I just realized, you know, I would go to work with my engineering job, and it, it would be all right. I had, I'd enjoy it, but sometimes you're just like looking at that clock like, <laughs> when's it time to get off? But then I could go home and work until 11, 12 o'clock at night and just make myself, you know, like, I've got to go in and get some sleep so I can be ready for my regular job in the morning. So that's kind of my passion. I really enjoyed doing it more. It wasn't as much like a job. Hmm. So I guess those two things made me think, maybe I should think about doing this on the side. I never, like I said, if, if I was sitting here right now with you guys and, and somebody like me were like, what are you, you going to be in 10 years? I, 
would not have been able to tell you I'm going to be running my own business, restoring cars and stuff. But it just, oh. you kind of learn as you go through to also really what you like and more importantly, maybe what you don't like about Absolutely. things. And um, that was probably it. Absolutely. Let's go for some lightning round questions here. End it in a, in a light note here too. You ready for this one? <laughs> Can bring it let's, on. Let's do it. Favorite book of all time? So, I like a lot of American literature, fiction, you know, Kerouac, Steinbeck, and so forth, but I did, it's actually my fiance got me to read this, probably when we first started dating, it's called The Road Back to You. It's uh, an Enneagram book, if you, anyone's ever heard of that, but it's a lot of, um, it kind of tells you a lot about yourself, your personality, why you act the way you do, and then also other people's, it goes full circle, there's different types of personalities, and it tells you little nuances about each one and then how each one can interact with each other or should interact with each other to, to be the most effective. So it's, I thought it was pretty interesting to read that. Absolutely. But like so, that, and, and I used to read quite a bit of American literature. Um, probably Steinbeck would be mm -hmm. one of my most, one of my favorite authors of that genre. But. Awesome. Well, before I go to the next one, because this is an extremely professional thing, I need to have my friend up here start taking some pictures because I don't think we have pictures. I'm sorry, guys. All right, next one. This guy's been with me for four years coming to every single one of these, so I appreciate oh, wow. that. Next, your favorite car featured in a movie. That's a pretty good one right there. Um, I guess I grew up, my, my dad always, we would watch this, but it's a movie called American Graffiti, mm -hmm. and it's got a little yellow 32 Ford Coupe, a little hot rod. And that, that car is really iconic. I enjoy that. Um, Did you see Ford versus Ferrari? I haven't yet, but I want to. I've, yeah. heard, I've had so many friends go see it, <laughs> and I've heard great things. I want to go see that. Um, that's probably my favorite car. Nice. Uh, favorite, favorite restaurant in Murfreesboro? You know, I'm still, and I've been going to this forever, and maybe that's why, but like Demas's. Oh, I, no. I love that place, and it's yes. family owned. It's here in Murfreesboro. That is probably still one of my favorite restaurants. The bread. Of. Yeah. The, the soup. soup. The soup. The soup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The black and chicken pasta. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> now, as President Jed Bartlett would say, oh, sorry, not, not, not yet. High school movies. When you think of high school movies, what do you think of? <laughs> Varsity Blues. Nice. Um, Dazed and Confused. Nice. Yeah. Two, nice. two top notch movies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you think of music you listened to in high school, <laughs> uh, Lil John. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brad Paisley. Yeah, those are probably the two that, first nice. two that come to mind. First ones come to mind. Yeah. Now, as President Jed Bartlett would say, what is next? What's next? Uh, so trying to grow my own business. The, the past few years have been really getting everything started, uh, LLC set up, getting the business insurance, getting the shops. I just added on to one of my shops. I just finished it like two weeks ago. So just the real estate's you know, uh, getting enough room for us. Um, hopefully that is going to slow down now and I can focus more on the business end of it uh, as far as, you know, just how can I grow? I want to at some point take my manufacturing and engineering skill set and put more of that in, look at the technology, maybe get like a 3D printer, a mill, a lathe, and, and, and start doing some, like everything I do now is like one off or it's just custom and, or it's just do some maintenance, maintenance on this car. But if I could get into some, I won't call it high volume production because that's like decent, but you know, where we can manufacture things. We have fixtures and jigs where we can, we can make one thing and then keep making it over and over, you know, and then, and then market it and hmm. sell it. That way, um, I think that will be pretty profitable. Like I said, the 3D printing, rapid prototyping stuff, I think uh, there's actually the high-end custom car building is moving that way where they're getting a lot of one-off machine parts and stuff like that. So kind of find that niche, have a little machine shop done for that. And uh, it's weird, I guess, as, as looking full circle too, you know, I was so used to having the 401k matching and all the benefits of the, the big corporate jobs, which I don't have anymore. So I've really got to look into that, take care of myself, work with a financial advisor and make sure that, you know, at some point when I'm ready to retire at like 45, you know, <laughs> I'll, right. I'll be ready to go. But no, nah, that's probably nice. where I want to be the next step. Absolutely. 
Well, guys, we do have a treat for those that are interested. Um, ben has parked his car outside the one you worked on here in high school. Yeah, so we finished it when I was a junior in high school, so, oh, yeah, oh, five. Oh, five. For those that are interested, I would like, uh, when we're done here in just a moment, if you would like to come see it, please be careful. It's pretty. So please, please, please be careful when you're out there. If you'd like to take pictures with Ben in the car, we'd love to have you do that. And Ben, yeah. a little thing for him as well. Please give a hand to Mr. Ben Smithson. I appreciate y'all having you. me. Yes. It was an honor to be here. Thank you. If you'd like to come talk to Ben, if you'd like to come talk to Ben for a minute, come on up. In just a minute, we'll also go out.